If you ever wanted to use Scrapey but you didn't want to use a full project, you just wanted the spider and nothing else, you didn't need any of the extra stuff that comes with it, then today's video is really going to help you out. So what I'm going to show you how you can do is you can actually run Scrapey from a singles Py script. Uh, you can still get the functionality that you need, the basic functionality for exporting and seeing what's being scraped on the screen. So we're going to do a basic web scraper, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. We use the CSS selectors that are built in with Scrapey. We're going to output our data to a CSV and I'm going to show you how to do all of that in one Py file without using a start project. So let's get started. Okay, so I've created a virtual environment and I have installed Scrapey. I'd always recommend using a virtual environment when you are creating new projects. Uh, it just helps keep everything stop not conflicting with each other, makes it better. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import Scrapey because that is what we're going to need. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to import right away is the crawler processes, which is what we're going to need to use to run the Scrapey file directly from here. So we do from scrapey.crawler and we're going to import crawler process. I believe it's with capitals like this. So we get no errors, that's good. So what we wanna do is we wanna basically just mimic what a spider is, and we're gonna add in a couple of bits of information that lets us either output the, the data to the screen and, and also so we can export it to a CSV file. So the first thing we need to do always is we need to create a class because we are going to be inheriting from the spider class. And this one I'm just gonna call whiskey spider. Uh, because that is what we're going to be scraping today. And I'm going to create this is a scrapey.spider as you would do normally. The next thing that we want to do is we need to give our spider a name. So I'm just going to call this one uh, whiskey for no real reason other than what it In fact, we'll do single malts because that is the section of the website that we're going to be scraping. There we go. The next thing that we need to do is we need to start our requests. Uh, this is the same in any scrapey spider. So I'm going to say, uh, DEF for defining our function and this is the start requests function within Scrapey and we need to give it itself because we are within our spider class. The next thing we want to do is we want to yield out of this the actual URL and the response so the sorry the request so we do scrapey.request and I'm going to give it the URL here so I'm just going to go straight over to the website for a minute we'll have a look at it and then we'll come back so here it is here uh, this is the um, the section of the website we're going to scrape there are 2800 odd products and i have it set up to show uh 24 per page but i think we can do more than that so what i'd like to do always is just click on the next button and see what happens and we see right away up here that the url has changed i'm going to go ahead and change the page size i know that this can do 120 so that's what we're going to do so that's our url there i'm going to copy that and we're gonna come back here, I'm gonna paste it in. And where it says page is equal to two, I'm just gonna change that to one because we're gonna start on page one. The next thing that we wanna do is we want to now write our next function. Now this is our pass function. This is where we're going to actually take the data off each page. So we're gonna do define and then pass and we do self and we need to give it the response. So this is the response that's going to come back from our scrapey request here. If we don't give it the response, we don't give it anything that can, uh, anything that has any data that we can get out of it. And the next thing that we wanna do is we want to check out our website and see where all of the information is that we wanna scrape. Now, if you're, if you're new to Scrapey or, or web scraping in general, or even CSS selectors, I've got beginner videos on all of those. This video, I'm gonna focus more on just running the crawler with the crawler process. So I might go quite quickly through the pass function here, but essentially what you want to do is you want to come to your website, do inspect element, and then use that to find out where all the product information is. So if I make this a bit bigger, you can see right away on this hand side, we've got a list class, product grid dash item. So I know that I'm going to need this, which is where all the products are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say our products is equal to response.css and it was a list item, so li, and the class was product dash grid like that. And now what we can do, because we found all of those elements and save them in this products variable, we can just loop through them. So for item in products, and now we can actually access the individual bits of data within each one. So if I open this up, 
there's extra information here. We could grab the link if we wanted to, but for this case, it's not really about the data that comes out, it's about the process. So I'm just gonna pull the name and the price and the, uh, uh, the metadata here. So what I'm gonna do is we can see this is the name and I'm gonna grab that product-card name and it's a P, so it's a paragraph. And we can also see right there that there's one that says meta and this one which says data one has one underneath that says price so there we go so that's nice and easy couldn't have asked for a more simple uh, uh, simple way of doing this so what we want to do is we want to yield out and we want to do item.css in fact we need to call that something don't we so we're going to say name and it's the item.css because we are looking in each item variable here that we're storing for each one and it was a p tag product dash card name now we actually want the text from this we don't want the raw element so we can do dot text uh, sorry double colon text dot text is not in scrapey and then we do dot get like that so that is going to basically go out and get the text from that element so in bigger and badder scrapey projects you would absolutely use an item loader and the item class and you would clean your data that way and you would pass it all through the scrapey pipelines uh, like you would want to but in this case we're just doing it in one script so we're going to happily do dot get and then we're going to move on and we're also going to say the i'm just going to call it meta for lack of a better thing item.css and again it was a p and this one was meta so we can just write that and then exactly the same thing we can do text and dot get again and finally price there we go item.css I like to use CSS selectors over XPath, it's just what I prefer. You can use the XPath selector selectors if you rather. And again, text and dot get. That is going to yield out of this response, so basically the HTML from the page, all of this bits of data for everything that we've got here. So now that we're at the point where we would be able to get all of the products and the information that we've specified here off of the first page, we might want to actually loop through all of the pages and get all of the data. There's a few different ways to do this. Um, I'm just going to do it with a simple uh, range loop because I can see right away here, if I scroll down, that there are 24 pages. So I'm just going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is for X in range, just move this up here. And I'm going to say 2 to 25 because remember we're doing the first page here and then I'm going to say yield and we want to do scrapey dot request request now we can give it the URL again but this time with an F string I copy all of this we don't actually need that sort thing on the end uh, but we'll leave it in anyway and where it says one I'm just going to change that to two there we go so uh, sorry X not to x there we go so we're basically saying for x in range 2 to 25 we're going to get a whole new bit of information from this url and then right at the end of this um sorry this is off the screen a little bit this is bad from make it one smaller we need to basically say the callback is equal to self.pass so what that means is for every one of these pages that we go through, we're gonna call back our pass function and we're gonna get this information. If you don't put that in there, you don't get any data back. So that's very important to add in. So now that that's there, we need to set up the crawler process that we've imported up the top here. So crawler process allows us to run this uh, with just within itself within this script without the rest of the scrapey project now scrapey is built on the twisted asynchronous library which is why we need to use a process and we need to do the crawler process settings first otherwise we're not going to actually get anything to work so i'm going to say process is equal to crawler process which is what we've imported up here i'll make that one bigger now that we're actually there we go and I'm going to say we need to give it some settings. So I say settings is equal to 
and we'll give it a dictionary. We'll give ourselves some space. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the settings that we would normally have in our Scrapey project. And because we don't have the rest of the project to back this up, we're just using this one script. We need to put them in manually here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the feed data, which we can use the feed export so we can actually export our data out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, feed URI. And this is going to be uh, the name of the file that we're saving to. Uh, so I'm just going to call this whiskey.csv. And the next one is going to be the feed uh, format. And we're going to do here, we're just going to say it's a CSV. So that should work for us. Now we can actually use our process to run this script, this script within itself. So we can say process.crawl and we want to give our spider name here and paste that in and then process.start. So what this is going to do is it's basically going to use, as I said, the twisted asynchronous library and it's going to go ahead and grab this data for us. So now if I run this, we'll go over and correct any mistakes I've made because I've just written this all out as is and we'll see what happens. Okay, we can see everything zipping by. That's going quite quickly. And we can see down here we have scraped count 2867, which was exactly what we had on the page. And if I open up here, we'll have a CSV file. There we go, with all of the data that we requested. So there's all the names of the products and the, uh, the metadata and then the name of the product again. So there was always something I was going to mess up. And that is because I didn't change the card name here to price. So let's change that real quick. Delete our CSV file and we'll run it again. And this time we'll have the actual data that we want out. There's always something, right? It would be uh, no fun if it was all like, you know, straight away, no errors. And again, 2867 scrape counts. Um, we can see 24 responses, which is right because we had 24 pages. And somewhere around here, stored CSV, stored CSV feed in whiskey.csv. There we go. Let's open that up. And now we have the prices much, much better. Now we can see that our data actually has some spaces on the front. And maybe we would want to change the prices. All I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to add dot strip onto each of these just to remove the white space. Um, but basically that's it. So this is a really useful way of if you wanted to actually write your own scrapey spider but you didn't need to have a full project because you weren't going to be using the rest of the project stuff in there like the middlewares, the pipelines or anything like that. You only just wanted to do it like this. This is a nice and easy way of doing that. So thank you very much for watching guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you have, let me know, drop me a comment below and please subscribe. There's lots of web scraping content on my channel already and more to come. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.